morning. I hope everybody's doing just right. Hi, my name is Hannah Maloof and this is my dad, Sammy Maloof. And we're here at Maloof Racing Engines in Southern California. San Gabriel, California. <laughs> so come right, on in. Engine Builder for having us do the, in, the Instagram takeover and having us be a part of that. We really appreciate it. And I also want to say thank you for uh, featuring me in your women's issue this last month. Uh, I, that was a lot of fun. It was a great interview. And uh, and I know they also featured my dad a couple uh, months ago as well with one of the bills that he did too. Thank you so much. Yes, you know, we never trivialize that gift, you know, because everything anyone's craving in life is always going to be on the other side of one person so we don't we don't trivialize that gift at all and we don't trivialize people so everybody who's watching us we truly celebrate each and every one of you and we do celebrate engine builder magazine and thank them quite a bit because they've given us a really nice platform and without them i'm sure there's a lot of businesses that probably wouldn't be recognized but we celebrate you guys for recognizing ours yes thank you all right, so we're gonna give you the 10 cent tour that we give everybody. Yep. And then uh, we'll give you some shop information, shop history, and some of the equipment, and a lot of new things that we have going on here. So I guess, but we first walk in, we don't want to pass up this one. Everybody knows this car from the fastest car on Netflix. Don't go on it. Just go on that side. So we got the shop truck right up front, but. Yeah, that is a good truck. I had that truck when I was in high school, and that's where I started my street racing career, in that 1964 Chevy pickup, which that truck made me a lot of money because, you know, it looked pretty heavy, which it is, but it was a bad Jose at the time, and really it made me a lot of money until I bought my 68 Z28 Camaro, and then I would trailer my Camaro to the street races and then unhook the trailer off my truck, and if they... If they beat my truck, they can run my Camaro. And most of the time, the truck handled everything that it came up against. It's got a blown 498 cubic inch big block in it. And it's right under a thousand horsepower. So it runs really good, it's super dependable. That engine's been in it for about 10 years. Let's move on in and let's show them what's going on. All right. These are pretty much some of our stuff and customer cars. This is a road race car that we set up for a gentleman by the name of Jim Wilkie. He's been a Hollywood stuntman with me for many years. And um, he's got into road racing. I helped him get the car. I helped him set, up, set it up. It's got a 358 cubic inch dry sump Ford engine in it. And Hannah just got done changing out the Jericho to a Super T10 because the gearing in the Jericho just wasn't right for this course. So instead of him, instead of her swapping gears out of the Jericho, which is common, we do that, she just set him up a Super T10, put it in there so he can go do the short courses and not burn up the clutches. And then the long courses, he can put his Jericho back in it. So that's where we're at with that one there. Yeah. And if you guys are wondering, the one under this one, this is actually yes. a little piece of history. This is my first car <laughs> when I was 16. This is a my first car was 68 Nova. And she had a good look after this. <laughs> yep. It's got a 400 small block in it. And believe it or not, it's a super dependable car, but Hannah likes to just keep this one undercover all the time. I do. I like to baby this one. This one here is a, our 56 Chevy. It's a gasser car, and it's got a 510 cubic inch big block in it with a Super T10 trans in it, and it's got a Ford 9 inch in it with a 389 rear end gear. So it runs pretty good. It's like a mid 10 second street car. It, hang, it, it hangs with some of them, but we just use it as a street car, as a shop car. 
This one was also raced on Street Outlaws at one point during the mega race. Yeah, with um, it. with um, Asian and farm, farm truck. and Asian, yeah. yeah. And it's this one here's a normally aspirated big block, no nitrous. It runs really good though. It's super dependable on pump gas. Yeah. So <laughs> this this one here is a Cobra that it's got a 427 small block in it. And it runs pretty good. We built this one maybe, what, 15 years? Yeah. About 15 years ago. It still runs really good. The GT1 Corvette back there, I've raced that for about 30 years. It's a 385 cubic inch small block, but we have to run a restrictor plate on it. And that motor's somewhere about 760, 770 horse. The, the car next to it is this little Joshua's car. Joshua's like a little nephew to me. He hangs out in the shop quite a bit and does stuff and his mom's been here for 20 some years. But he's got that little IROC Z28 which used to be Janine's car and now he built a pretty radical small block Chevrolet for it and put it inside there. The van next to that is a camera van. We use that for filming in our stunt stuff. So we made that van into a, into a filming van. So People, there's like six seats in the back, film crew sits in it, and we drive that next to a car or a car chase we're doing so they can get the footage on it. I originally built that for Cradle to the Grave, and we put a DMX on a quad runner, mounted it to the back, and it made him look like he was doing a lot of that hard driving. Of course, he did some on a quad runner, but the, the stuff that was really out of control and and more so for stunt players, even though he probably could have done it and get it, got it done just right. We don't like to put those guys in danger. So we put one of our stunt players on it. I mean, put him on the bike and then put, put a driver inside the van. Even though he was on that bike and he was going through all that, we just rather have it do it that way than put him in a, in a more dangerous zone, keep him safe. But he did a great job. Working with him is great. Let's move on over here. Uh, Megan, <clears throat> Hi. This is Megan. This is one of my sisters. She's. <laughs> I'm working on. <laughs> you're on what you're working on? Yeah, I'm working on the Eleanor. Um, from bottom 60 seconds. I'm doing. Up here on the rack. Yeah, it's right there. I've been doing a restoration on it. So much just got done. It's. So the um. It's okay. We'll stand on the oh, side. I'll stand right here. <laughs> the uh, owner of this car is Jerry Bruckheimer, who is the producer of Gone in 60 Seconds. Um, I've been doing a restoration on it from under the dash, under the car, in the engine bay. And um, I actually have been trying to find all these different kind of parts for it that are from the movie. So one of the parts I came across I had to make because aftermarket parts didn't even look similar to the movie. So I ended up making a switch, which I'll... Now, mind you, that is one of the cars from Gone in 50 seconds. So this is the Switch, which is exactly from the movie. The ones aftermarket aren't like it, and since this car is going to be sold for close to a million dollars, it's got to be exact. Um, but other than that, everything's been going great, and it should be done. It's 80% done right now. But this and it is an original car from Gone in 60 seconds, so that yeah. is the original um, 428 Cobra Jet car. Yes. So it's got a, it, it's all... 428. It's got the top loader tramps. It's set up with the, all the original stuff from Ford and uh, and the graphic kit that's on it for Gone in 60 Seconds. So it's not like a replica car. Yeah. It is the car. This one's actually the only 428 on set for the whole show. This is the, uh, the actual Eleanor. All the other ones were either 350s or 302s. 351s. Or 351s or 302s. And just normal Mustang that they bolted on different kits to make it look like this one. But yeah, that's what I've been working on. This one here is a Pro Street 582 cubic inch big block Chevrolet that we um, finished for a customer of ours out in Huntington Beach area. He's putting it in a Pro Street Nova. So they want something that makes somewhere about 900 horse, 950 horse and drive it on the street. So that's what this engine is all about. It, it'll, it makes well up to 950, close to 1,000 horsepower. And 
and it's still streetable. Let's move on, Missy. All right. Explain to them what's going on, what you've got going on. Some of the ones you finished over here. Um, yeah, I'll turn them on to that too. Um, do you want to tell them about the street Go right ahead. All right, so this is the stock car. Uh, the one that, I, a, a lot of people, if you followed us, uh, know the stunt car. It used to be red, and then it was black, and now it's orange and white. Um, yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's a character. We've made it a character. Um, I raced it a lot at Irwindale. It's where I got a lot of my training in from my dad. He trained me in this car. Um, I started out in the Dodge. No, when you started out stunt driving this car on the street. Well, yeah, when it, when it comes to stunt driving. It's the um, first car she's really ever driven other than sitting in my lap. Yeah. And when she was two years old, driving wherever I would go. But once once Hannah got to be like four, she was all over it, man. <clears throat> in fact, all my daughters learned in this car. They all stunt drive. And when I say it's a stunt car, explain to them yeah. how yeah. it's a stunt car. So... The way that we have this car built, hook, come look at this. The way that we have it built is, uh, first of all, the texture of the paint is bed liner, so that you know it's durable and you can touch it, you can sit on it, you can bump it. It's it's not going to scratch the paint. And then if you look inside here, we also have the three pedals, and it's not for a stick shift. So it's actually front and rear braking systems, and they're separate, so that you can control the front brakes separate from the back brakes. And that's so that you know there's a uh, it's for car control and for stunts, you know? But she has taken it to the drag strip. All three of my daughters learned to drive in this car. So. Yeah, and also the reason why it's this color is because uh, we have a new show coming out. I don't know um, if you guys have seen it yet or heard of it, but it's called Drive Hard the Maluque. It's gonna be on Netflix and it's airing tomorrow, the 26th. And uh, this is actually one of the cars that was on, on the show. It was uh, drag raced by a girl you'll see on the show. Her name is Sonia. What a great gal, too. Yeah. And she raced this car. So, anyway, this car originally could start out to be nothing but a stunt car. Right. But, again, my daughters, they not only want to do stunts, they want to start drag racing. So... I train them in vehicular control first. That's the main thing before they get on any track. I train them in this car to be out of control, sideways, backing up, reverse 180, slides into a box to be consistent. Otherwise, I don't care what you're going through when it comes to driving, take it from somebody whose, whose life has been nothing but vehicular control. Everything is good until it's not good. And then when it's not good, if they don't know what to do to get out of it, that's when real wrecks happen. That's when real challenges come up and people really get hurt. But I've trained my daughters in vehicular control when something does go wrong, the thing to do. So it started out as a stunt car. And then, of course, it wasn't fast enough then. They built their 400 small block and made 650 horse on it. And they were drag racing it and putting on stunt shows with it the way it is. And then, yes, for our show, it, we used it. Let Sonya use this car on her show to race James, and you'll see it on the episode. Huh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this car has really been a great car. I mean, we've done, my dad's put on lots of outreach shows and stunt shows all over the world for schools and colleges and, and churches. churches everywhere. And we give rides in the stunt car. We also have people come and we train them to drive in it and train them on the track and train them in stunts. Especially stunt players. You know, it's been it's been really a good good tool for us, especially training other stunt players to drive. You know, the young ladies they're 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 great talented stunt women and they just want to brush up on their driving. We get him out here and we train get his phone number please, Ivan. Get his phone number too, because I wanna I need him. Thank you. Let's move on, yeah. Yeah, tell them about the ones you just so, aside from all the drive engines we do and street strip engines we do, we also do boats. So, this is one of the boat engines that my dad built. Um, Actually, we both. Well, yeah, I helped him. It's a 582 cubic inch motor. It's going in a 
34 foot um, commander hall. I'm pretty sure it's a commander hall. But I built the last engine for him about 15 or 18 years ago. It was a 510 cubic inch engine. And in one of the oil coolers that run through the water system, they went lame. That's how come I always encourage boat people to have a separate cooler. Don't run the oil through the water bullets because what happens is they rust out. And when they rust out, they fill the engine full of oil, I mean full of water. So now you got clam chowder through the whole engine and most of the time they don't know until some damage is done. Well, after the water, the old engine filled up with water, they let it set and it turned into a nothing but a big rust bucket. So I left all that behind and I said, let's just build a 582 for it, put it in that deal and you'll have a good time with it. So we just finished this one up. He just needs to pick it up and have his guys put it in. This one here is a 67 Camaro that we built for who? It was originally built for Robert Patrick, the actor. The Terminator 2, the liquid cop. Yeah. And he's a good friend of ours, but we built it for him and we built a 540 cubic inch big block for it. And it's got a six speed in it. And then Robert, had, he, had to, he had to forfeit the car, so we got the car back from him, kept it in the family. And now it's still here. In case Robert ever wants it back. <laughs> and then moving on here, explain to them what we're doing over here. Okay, so we're going to have to excuse our dust a little bit, but we are, ex well, I don't know if it could be considered expanding, but I guess expanding, right? So we're adding a machine shop inside our shop. So I know it's, it's getting a little bit more difficult to outsource for machining. Uh, there's not that many places around anymore, and when you do find a place, it takes, you know, they're usually backed up, and it takes, you know, quite a bit of time for them to get around to it, and then it puts us and our schedule behind on our customer's engine, so we decided that, you know, we have the room and the resources, so we're going to uh, go ahead and add a machine shop, so that's what we're doing, we're building a hour. closed area that will be another an clean hour. room, our second clean room, and it will be our machine shop. And we're going to be adopting all of the, our equipment from uh, Larry Malacone, who is an amazing engine builder. And he builds all of uh, Big Red's engines. He's a, good, a great friend of my dad's. And um, yeah, he's actually going to be on the show as well with his uh, precious vet and his grandson. <laughs> His grandson is going to be. Um, <laughs> make it, go ahead, run the gamut with it. Make it. Her grand, his grandson is actually going to be here. racing the legendary Precious Vet, which was his drag car from what the sixties, yeah, fifties, early late fifties, early sixties. Yeah. So, that, it's a really, really awesome story of a you know grand grandfather and the grandson and how the car got passed down yeah, through from, the generations. From, from Larry to to, Ro to Rocky His and now to, to um, Justin. Justin. And yeah, they're on our show, and, and Larry Malacone is probably one of the greatest engine builders out there as well, and everything's in the detail with him. You know, he's very methodical. He doesn't want to be rushed about anything, but I'm going to get the equipment that he has. Look, we got a good chassis dyno, yeah. and we build a lot of racing engines and stuff, <clears throat> but Larry's got an engine dyno, and he also has got a CK-10 and a bridge port and rod machine, stuff that I'm going to need. You know, sometimes we send our stuff out to our machinists and they're, the ones that we do use, you know, they're great. Such as like QMP, they're great. Great. But, but sometimes Brad is so backed up and busy that we, and we understand that and we don't want to jump in front of people. So some of the stuff we need to do by ourselves. Now the balancing and stuff. Yeah, all of our balancing we use Repco, Larry at Repco. He's yeah. great. He's, he's shout, probably, out shout, yeah, out Larry. shout out to Larry. He's one of the greatest. <laughs> So, but anyway, other than that, that's why this room is being built, and that's why our shop looks like it's it's yeah. under construction a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, this room. Yeah, that'll be nice. Let's move on. All right, let's keep going. Let's, uh, that's little Yvonne over there. He's our. This is Yvonne. Let's go say hi to Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne. Hello. 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 Nice to meet you guys. This first time on live. Literally. <laughs> Hello. Yvonne is our shop help, I guess, right? He yeah. helps us do, you know, all the all the cleaning and he cleans 
all the cars and helped us do all the... Explain to them why you're here. Who? Yeah, explain. I'm under his mentorship. Yes. He's showing me how to win up the race of life and how to have mechanical skill sets and to be a better man. Tell them what you, what, what, what you're, what you love to do in life besides, what, what is one of your deals? I love to play baseball. And what do you want to be? A pro baseball player, a pitcher actually. So that's what he's doing now. And to be a pro at anything, it's not just the sport itself. You need to know how to work with relationships with people. You know, and you need to learn how to win from the inside out. And that's one thing we do pride our whole family. You know, I wish the rest of the gang was here. But um, we pride ourselves from working them from the inside out, never from the outside in. So how they act and how they react to something, that's a major deal, you know. We, we've learned that there's winners and losers in life, and every one of us has a storm. What makes the winner the winner and the loser the loser is how you react to storms. So even though Yvonne is a great ball player and he's, he's really on top of this game for six years old, I mean for 18 years old, but, um, but he, He's learning, he's learning more <clears throat> skill sets inside of him when it comes to galvanizing his relationship with others. That's where it's a big deal. You can, have, you can be one of the greatest ball players, but have the worst attitude, and you'll be the greatest ball player in the dugout. So that's what we do with our mentorship, winning at the race of life. We bring people, young ones in, and we help mentor them. And that's the biggest part, one of the biggest parts of our life. Yeah, this is all great. And we love doing it, but it's nothing better than mentoring and training people how to win in life and watch their dreams and visions come to pass. So this one. Explain this one. Tell, explain that one here. Yeah. explain this one. This is my dad's car. This is how he made his living was in this car. And if you know, and you're from this area, then you know, you know the car. So yeah. it's a very well-known car, but explain it. Now. This car is my 68 Camaro Z28 and the license plate on it said, you say go. And I would. Hey, over here. <laughs> no. so you gotta get for the cameraman here. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what I would do is I would make two to five grand a week in illegal street racing. And then we started, some of us started what they called the Flying Five, where we would get five cars behind us. They take off first, and then when they get to us, we take off for 5,000 bucks. And this car, Back in the day, it was a 310 cubic inch small block Chevrolet. It had 586s in the rear. I had a Super T10 with Liberty gears with a real low first gear, the big drop first to second. So, and a 26 and a half inch tall slick. So this car would jackrabbit out the hole. If they didn't catch me, they weren't gonna, they weren't gonna win. So back in the day, I would leave it in the gates to stick shift. So I would leave at 7,700, shift at 8,800, and the car ran on the track 996 and on the street 1004. So it was pretty close. And back in the day, there wasn't that many 10 second street cars or even 14 second street cars. So we made a lot of money in this car. And then I got transitions to, you know, road racing. The GT1 vet that we showed you earlier. Earlier, yes. And as a Christian, we like to obey the laws of the land and do what is right. So we, we're not an advocate of street racing anymore, but although we have a lot of friends that still do it, and we don't condemn them or judge them, but we like to just keep it on the track, keep it safe. And then here, let's move on. Uh, let's keep going. So well, this is, well, normally my dad's drag car is here, but it's in the trailer. It's it's ready to go racing. So <laughs> um, this is the customers we we're doing. Um, this one, this one is, you know, this is Supernatural. This is my drag car. Um, I started racing this one back in 2019 in the Summit Series um, at Fontana, and I went all the way to Vegas and made the top 10. Um, my first time ever racing the car and first time ever in a series, so that was a lot of fun. Um, this is a really, really awesome car. I love this car. Um, it's actually really an interesting story on how we got it, right? Um, I was racing the the pickup truck at the time. And the stunt car. And the stunt car, but I had kind of moved up from that and was started with the pickup truck for about a year. And um, I was looking to go like, you know, more pro. I was I was thinking about cutting up my other Nova, you know, and making it into a drag car. And then um, 
at that time we were also building, we yeah, built, yeah. huh? But yeah, 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 we were building, um, at the time we were building William Wade's 64 uh, Nova. Yeah, it was a shoebox Nova. Really, really beautiful, clean car, inside out, underneath, in, like, in the engine bay, everywhere. It had a Chris Lawson chassis all the way through and through. Uh, beautiful car, very clean. And we, uh, we built him a small block. Well, no, that one was a big block. For the Nova, the 64 yeah, yeah, it was, that one was originally a small block car, though, right? And then we built him a big block because we wanted to convert it to a big block, I think. Right? Anyway, yeah. we built him Anyways, a 577. Was, yeah, we built him a 577 uh, cubic inch big block for the car because he wanted it to be a big block car. And um, over time, he started you know, going back and forth. He's like, well, maybe we'll just build a small block for it and I'll get a big block car. And so that's what he ended up going with. And he decided, okay, well, I found this car and I'm gonna ship it to you guys and we'll put the big block in that. It was this one. Came on the trailer and I walked out of the shop on a Sunday and I looked at that, I was like, I was like, that's a beautiful car. I was like, I really like that car. You know, I was like, and when it came in, I was looking at it, it was so, I just, I just felt, I instantly fell in love with the car. And then I got in the car, it just happened to be that the seat was set for my height because you know, I'm not as tall, I'm 5'2 and a half. And the owner of the William Wade is 6'1. Yeah. So, you know, it was like folding him to get in there, but it fit me perfectly. And uh, and uh, he ended up changing his mind and going back and put the big block in the Nova, in the red Nova, uh, the 64. And um, he was gonna end up just getting rid of this one. But, um, you know, my dad and I, my dad had done like a lot of work for him and he's seen how much I love the car and that I wanted to go pro and he ended up uh, giving it to us. Giving it to you. Giving it to me. And so, uh, which was, you know, a, a big blessing and I had, you know, put, we put a lot of time into it and, and it put it to some, some great use and we built a, we built an engine for it um, and we have it set at about, what? Eight. Eight. High eights. High eights. You know, in the quarter of a mile. It's about like 164. Huh? 162. 164, eight something. Yeah. 164, eight something in the, in the quarter. And uh, so, yeah, it's a really great car. And then this last, uh, what was it, February or January that we went to Vegas with it, I ended up meeting a girl out of, where is this car from? Uh, Sacramento. No, home. Um, what's that one state? Ohio? No. Oh, you're Michigan? Michigan? I don't know. Was <laughs> meeting the uh, meeting a girl out of another state that where the car was actually built, and she ended up hooking me up with the guy who painted the car. And, and got the whole history. Trying to get a hold of, I didn't know who it was, and I just knew one day I was going to talk to the guy who painted the car, and. Uh, they ended up giving me the entire story and backstory on the car, and turns out I'm the second driver of the car, aside from the owners, wow. who was an act, who was a girl who owned the car first, and then it went through this whole cycle, and then straight to me, and, and nobody have, raced it in between her and me. They so even have um, uh, the car on GTA. It's called You Wicked. It's a, one of the best cars oh, on the video game yeah, GTA. Yeah, yeah. They owned the owners of the car. Yeah, owned. they own that and built this. They owned a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like really nice possessions. Yeah, but so that's the backstory on the Nova. Talk about that one. And this one is mine and my twin sister Caitlin's car. We are still getting our grounds done. It. We haven't really raced it much, but um, we have a couple things to finish building on it, and then we're going to be taking it out a lot more. More seat time. Yeah, we need more seat time than this one. But this is our '73 Camaro. And uh, we got it from a pilot who had it in his aircraft hangar at um, the airport. And he raced it a long time ago at Irwindale, I believe, right? His name's Benny. So we named the car Benny. And it's called Benny is a Jet. <laughs> and um, we raced it um, a couple times now, but yeah, we'll be racing it more soon. Can I help your sister? Okay. 
All right, so I think we've pretty much covered all of our little gems here. So let's, uh, go on. yeah, we could start uh, working our way back into the engine room. This is our chassis dyno. So we... And the reason why there's stuff over there, because Megan, you want to explain what all that stuff is? That's all the She's bad stuff. Her the Eleanor. <laughs> <laughs> That's the stuff we took off of the Eleanor that we will no longer be using. So in case the customer wants that or wants to do whatever he wants with it, it's his. <laughs> All right, so let's make our way to our engine room. That's where, you know, everything happens. This is a Nova we've built. Uh, we built a 427 cubic inch for this one um, for a guy who's um, out there by the beach and he, uh, he, he drives this one all the time. Like, it's about a 630 horsepower small block Chevrolet air conditioned car. And um, he works at the Long Beach shipyard. Yeah. Really good guy, great guy to work with, great guy to deal with. He just likes his stuff very fast and very flashy. Flashy. <laughs> so this room All right, here, so this is, this is the engine room. This is the clean room number one. Um, this is where we build all of our engines. And uh, we're in the process of building like a few of them right now, and we just put out a couple of them too. Um, yeah. Everything in here is organized to a T. I mean, if you look at any of our drawers, all of our tools, everything has to be in perfect order because that's how we run our shop. Everything is organized and in order and. Everything has to be like that, otherwise, you know, it, I don't, it's just, you can't work like that. It's, it's not, it's not right. Important. Yeah. So, I mean, even to when we lay things out, we lay everything out in order and, you know. It's the only way to build um, these kind of things. Look, 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 power. look <laughs> you know, order has always been the most accurate arrangement of things. If, you're, if your shop isn't in order, body's not in order there's going to be pain pain means something's out of order and me all my life i can't i cannot do anything when i walk into a place and see it a mess people that don't take care of their own stuff you really think they're going to take care of your stuff i don't think so so because i learned a long time ago people will see who you are before they hear who you are so that engineer that we've done is a 427 cubic inch small block Ford. That one's going in a 1969 Mach 1, and we're putting a five speed behind that. So that's a, that'll be a really good sh street strip combination. This one here is a 331 small block Ford that it's going in a, another Mustang. This is gonna go in a 65 or 64 and a half Mustang. And notice each one of these numbers here. What are those for, Hannah? Those are, uh, so we check the clearances on everything. I know a lot, you know, some people don't think it's as important, um, but we check every clearance for everything. So these are actually the clearances on the mains. Um, we go through each one, we check them, we go through the rod clearances. And you have to, if they're not where we want them, we, we have to get bearings that are under or over to make sure that we get the bearing the, the clearance numbers that we want we're blueprinting the engine i don't give a rip what everybody else does that's that's the way they do it but when it comes to the maloofs we do them a little bit different so when it comes to the iron motors street motors boat engines or all aluminum stuff it's the clearances have got to be completely different for each one yeah. everything is specific to the build exactly and to the car and what the purpose is exactly so. Everything goes into consideration. Tell them. Asian. Tell them. Hi, Asian. <laughs> Shout out to Asian. Shout out to Asian. <laughs> now listen, that's one Asian kid that can drive. So. Well, I don't know. Well, we never see so. him. Yeah, oh, that's right. You did beat him. That's right. Well, it doesn't mean he can't drive. He just drives <laughs> slow. He needs farm truck to show off. Asian, it's always the skinny pedal on the right. Remember that. We keep telling you that. So show them what you got here, Hannah. Okay, so this is Lily Bond's engine. Yeah, that's Lily Bond's engine. This is Yvonne's engine. Huh? He said Ola. Okay. He's speaking Spanish. 
speaking Spanish now, huh? So this is Yvonne's hey, engine hey, that my dad's doing with him. And Say hello to Lou. Hi, Lou. Lou, what's cracking, Lou? How's it going? No. <laughs> That's me. It just is getting better, y'all. It is getting better. We're glad to hear that. Yes, getting and, better. Um, so, yeah, this is for... This is for Yvonne that my dad's doing with him. He doesn't have a car yet, but he's doing the engine, and then he'll find a car for it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's one we're doing with him. Um, this one here, we're actually building for, um, this one here, we're actually building for the truck, right? That one's gonna be another blown engine. Yep. Um, you wanna tell them what size it is? Wow. She doesn't like to tell anybody <laughs> anything, but this one will be a 577 cubic inch big block. It'll be supercharged with a 1071 on it. And actually, I'm going to put an 871 on this one. I don't need a 1071. It's just a, it's going to be a street motor, street strip, and it should run somewhere in the, I don't know, low nines in a quarter mile and drive it on the street. Yeah. Shout out to Miss Camaro, Brittany. Hi, it's nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in. She draws amazing pictures of all of our cars, and um, thank you. It's an honor to have Hello. you here. Hi. <laughs> yeah, Miss Brittany. I don't know if I've ever met you, but you know what? My girls love you. You got to be, I, I got to love you too. We save all your photos. I have all of them. So thank you we for love being, them. Thank you for being such a talent. And all your notes, <laughs> letters. Thank you. Did we get rid of Asian and them yet? Are they gone? No, they're, they're driving and watching you. Uh, this one back here is no, actually... Huh? Asian is driving and watching us? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a recipe for something. Uh, this one back here is actually um, our boat engine. We uh, we are going to put that in. We have a 77 tunnel hole south wind, south wind tunnel hole drag boat. Um, it's in storage right now. <laughs> He said we don't die, we multiply. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the warning. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so that'll be going in our boat. That will be taken out pretty soon, hopefully. Um, we just got to stick it in there. And I got to get some custom seats made for it. Yep. So. Uh, That's in between all the other stuff we're doing. You know, yeah. building our room out there. And then we have our new show. New show. That's and... out, you know. Plus, they do a lot of mentorship stuff. And now racing and. You know, they didn't let my car out the trailer. My car's sitting in the trailer out there. They don't want you guys to see my car. <laughs> we can show you the car. I'll open the trailer. We'll show you his car. He's got a new hood we just put on it. So, um, yeah. Um, what else do you want to show them here? Uh, we can show some of the other little stuff we do. Like, we also do a lot of head work. So, we have a valve grinding machine over here. I don't know I've, if you've seen any of my videos. I posted a bunch of videos of me working on this. Um, we use this to, you know, um, cut the valve seats, and you can also cut the, cut the stems here. Cut um, the valves themselves. Huh? Cut the valves. Yeah, cut the valves. Um, so that's been a really, really great machine. I know it's really old, but it works amazing. Um, I don't even know if the company is still around, Sue. So, Sue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Quick, well, quick, and they have quick way now and yeah. many other ones, but this sea machine is really good. It's, yeah, it works great. It works amazing. Um, so, yeah, we use that to do all of our, you know, our head work when we do the valves and stuff. And we also have um, the, the stuff for the seat, so we cut the seats, seat um, the seat cutter. Uh, that machine's down below on the bottom shelf. Um, yeah, and then we also have, uh, we have a lathe right outside this room. We can bring you around to that, too. And we do a lot of work on that to make custom parts and custom do custom work on it, you know. Then um, we're gonna end up putting another one in the machine shop as well. But uh, move that picker. here, let me move this uh, picker. Okay. Again, this is an old lathe. From this is a very old lathe. I'm not sure where it's from, but. But uh, this has been a really good lathe too. We use it, use it to do lots of stuff. Multiple stuff. Lots. I mean, if you have a lathe, you know. And a mill over there. Mm -hmm. So. Now show me what you got over here, man. We have this. 
Um, so all your stick shift transmissions. Yep, we have we have a lot of stock on some things. A lot of you know, and of course everything is organized. So this is all our stick shift transmissions up here. We have our bell housings and clutches and extra parts cases. Extra parts. You know, early stick shift stuff is really hard to get anymore, but we've got a whole lot of it, and it's all good stuff. Some of it are, are cores, but they're still good. Mm -hmm. You know, we got rid of all our automatic stuff. A buddy of ours has a uh, transmission shop, and we sold them all the cores, probably 70 cores a couple months ago. A lot of them. So, <laughs> show them your toolbox here, Hannah, the way you keep it. This is, yeah, my sister's phone in there. Um, <laughs> this is... My toolbox, um, we keep it, you know, very organized, everything is clean, you know, you even when we're working in it, working on Tell it. Tell me you custom in your own ways so you have, you utilize the whole entire thing. Yeah, um, we custom, uh, rack system. Yeah, we've got a custom rack system that hangs off the side, so that easy access for a lot of our picks, which are all, you know, organized, and a lot of our tools, and Cutters, you know, riders. <laughs> uh, and this is a we have all our tools laid out there. And then we've got this mill here. Uh, this is a great mill we use to. The mill things, anything you mill. want from, from aluminum to steel, it doesn't matter. You know, we got the other stuff coming in that's just a lot bigger. That's where we're putting yeah. in that machine there. I mean, that, that shop there. But like I said, this is. If we didn't have anything else or got anything else, this is just right for us. Yeah, this has worked really great, but this will work even better. So you want to take them always upstairs? Always to upgrade. Um, huh? Want to take yeah, them we also have them. another. And this the shop is really never ending. There's yeah. so much going on here. We have. Um, uh, we have huh? Yeah, we can take you upstairs and you can look around up there. Uh, we can show we can show you the lunch room. We have this is where we all eat lunch. So right in here. Right in here, you'd say. There's a couple more strays sitting in here. Yeah, some strays that's in here. That's Tanaya and that's Jocelyn. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, yeah. And then uh, go upstairs. Uh, so. We actually have a two-bedroom house upstairs. So, yeah. um, and one of our friends are staying in it. John, John Kitterman. Yeah. Let's open the one door on him. I don't think John's there, <laughs> no. but we do have one of our good friends, John Kitterman, the one that we did. Uh, my dad did a interview with Indrum Builder on his uh, Nova, his seventy Nova, the red Nova with the six thirty two in it. So, um, is he awake in there? In there. He's not in there. No stuff is in there, but yeah. So there's another bedroom and a bathroom up here, um, and a shower, and a shower, AC. So it's a whole living quarters upstairs here. Um, and that's great. pretty much for Megan and Caitlin when they get out of line. <laughs>
see how clean our work is. Main thing is we don't like to see any wires anyway, so we, anywhere. So we, as we build the engine, we do the, the cars before we put them in. If we get the opportunity to do the engine compartment, then we detail everything, hide all the wiring, put everything in one time, super clean, super sanitary, so that there's no hiccups later on. There's no no leaks, no messes, no wires burning. It's just the it's just a better way of doing things, you know. I tell my children, you can do it, you can do it right, or you can do it better than anybody else. That's the way you should be looking at it. Uh, and these are all the fans and radiators and extra stuff that we have over here. Seats are up on top. Seats. You guys look at the seats. Also, if anybody wants mufflers, we're trying to get rid of all those mufflers. So if you guys need mufflers, yeah. Uh, well, oh, the, all the Flowmaster stuff. We have them out there, and these are all manifolds, intake manifolds and stuff. That whether we use them for um, test engines or put it, build an engine, put it in a car, or we use them for racing, or if we just use them on a car, it's always stuff that you're always going to wind up needing. So we never really get rid of it. We always keep it here so that we can have it. It's all good stuff. Um, all right. So now. The big reveal behind the door, something you guys I'm sure will never expect is yeah, behind this door. Yeah, if you all can guess before we even open this door what it's about. You'll see. You'll see, exactly. What do you think's behind this door? Somebody guess. Is Asian still on it? No, right. it's not your family, Asian, no. It's not your family that we have locked up. Let's, let's show them real quick. This room right here. There's a full-blown recording studio and sound room. Come in. Come on in. <laughs> here's the, here's Janine. She's the one who has this recording studio and sound room. Hi, everyone. Here's our singer and songwriter, media girl. That's, that's Engine Builder Magazine. <laughs> this room here, it comes over this way. It comes all the way back over here. Definitely five minutes so we can go over. And so, it goes, go ahead and explain. Yeah. I, I don't know anything about it. I don't sing. I mean, in the car. But, is this um, soundproof recording it's studio? Soundproof recording <laughs> studio that, you know, we used to make music. They make music in here. Janine's a singer songwriter and she does. It's fully equipped with a mini fridge, a microwave, and a coffee machine. Yep. And, and an iPad. Janine's been with us for about. 23 years, and um, this is what she does. She's a singer, songwriter, she has mentoring with music, and um, she mentors children and teenagers and young adults in singing and songwriting. Her son Joshua is like a nephew to me and like a brother to Hannah and Megan and Caitlin, but he's, he's usually here, but he's not here with us now, but he's on the show with us, you'll see him. But Jean, you want to say a little bit about what you do? Just for a second. Hi guys, everybody, real quick. I'm Janine. Um, been part of the family for a little bit, and uh, music and muscle cars have been together for years. The, the nostalgia behind it, the stories behind street racing, is awesome. So Sammy and I produce music together. We write songs together, and this is my happy place. <laughs> Thanks for visiting. So All now, right, so we'll take you back downstairs, and we're going to. Uh, We'll see if um, they had gotten us some gas. We're gonna actually start one of the engines for you. So maybe we can actually start some cars too. Maybe we can start the Z28. I don't know where my dad went. Um, so I'll walk you downstairs and then um, we can start some of these things and then um, show you a couple other little things and I'm maybe get some shortcut. history. He's taking the shortcut. I'm gonna go the long way with you guys. I don't think my mom will go down the stair. Actually, no, you know, I won't. <laughs> no, let's no, 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 let me see the camera. <laughs> no, no, let me no, see no, the no. camera. Let's go. No, 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 no. Yep. Here's my mom, the one behind the camera. Smile, say hi. hi. She's the one that's always behind the camera filming us and doing the social medias and doing the website. She's a little camera shy. They want to see a little camera cars. shy, but. So, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, just. Huh. Um, if you guys have any questions too, feel free to ask and we'll answer any of your questions. Um, we'll also 
I don't know. If you guys have questions, let us know. Ask them. Just walking down the stairs here. We're going to get some gas for that engine out front. And we'll start that for you guys so you can hear it. Um, and then, uh, let's see. And then maybe we could start the Z28 in the meantime, too. I'm sure you guys would love to hear this one, right? Um, our Instagrams... Um, our Instagrams are mine is Hot Rod Hannah seven seven seven. I don't know Megan's. Mine's Megan Maloof. Megan's is just her name. The shop Instagram is Maloof Racing. Uh, my dad's is Sammy Maloof. My mom's is Jennifer Maloof, and I'm sure Caitlin's is Caitlin Maloof. Which I think I seen her pop in somewhere. Oh. Oh, here she comes right now. <laughs> Say hi. This is Caitlin. Uh, that's the other twin. I see you I'm saying hi too? No, it's just this. Oh, it's like a live. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. You want to say hi to Asian? He's on there. Not really. Asian's on here somewhere. Get in, front. Get yeah. in front of the camera, Caitlin. Here. Like that. Hello. Say hi. Huh? Hi, Asian. And everyone else. <laughs> All right. Um, is somebody going to go get gas for this? Yeah, I did. I asked if they have, do you guys have any engine questions or anything else you guys want to see? Um, that we can show you guys while we wait for the gas. This um, car is going to be in the show of Drive Hard the Maloof Way. Yeah, this will, one will also be in the show. We want to lift the hood and show them what's underneath it. This one um, is actually uh, Megan drove in a music video for Pete Yorn. I don't know the name. Of, what was the name of the music video? Uh, never home, I think, or something. Never home, or something like that. It's a Pete Yorn. Never, never, never gone. Never gone. Sorry. Never <laughs> yeah. gone. It's a Pete Yorn video. So I drove um, this one. My sister drove a Charger, Challenger, Black Um This is it. <laughs> That's that. You want to so, tell them the history? Way, way back when, my dad never built go. this. My dad built this car for one of his friends a uh, long time ago, and it went through him selling it to another person to another person. And now we own it, <laughs> and it's mine now. <laughs> no, no, everything is yours. But people, listen, listen to your big brother here. Ever since they came into the equation, I've got to borrow my tools, I got to borrow my cars, I got to ask, I got to get in line for it. And he's become such a big giver because of this. No, no it, wait a minute now. There's, there's such a giver, and then there's thieves. Ask them what they really are. That before the car can get finished, my hands they claim it. So oh my goodness. See? <laughs> okay. Um, well, let's start something. I'm sure they want to hear some engines. Okay, very, I'll tell you what, let's start the legend that started this whole thing. Yeah, let's start, let's start the Camaro. We're going to start the Camaro. My car. <laughs> that one's mine. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's mine. It's my car. name's on the engine. I Watch out. Okay, so she helped me build. You want to show me your engine? Not really. <laughs> so she built this engine with me. Caitlin, come here. They already know the history of the car. We just talked about it. So now, all, all, all the years growing up, this one here, this one here always wants to be in this car. Always wants to be in this car. So now, when I'm ready to retire the car, it'll go to probably one of my daughters. I'm not sure which one right now. This one's not even driven. Now, yeah, we don't it's drive. It's already sitting in the car. But, but Caitlin built the engine for it. As thinking ahead of time, she's calling those things that don't exist as though they do. She's building a racing engine for it. She built a really nice piece for it. I'll start it up. If you want to tell them the size it is, you go right ahead. inches plus. <laughs> Want to tell him anything, Kevin? Um, as far as? Uh, as far as your car? Um, or what you do here? Are you so far Which away? car is Sammy's favorite? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Which oh, car is Sammy's favorite? <laughs> yeah, this, was, this was my pride and joy. It still is my pride and joy. I have my drive car that's in the trailer that Hannah will show you real quick. But Caitlin, do you want to tell them what you do with this shop or what you don't do with the shop? Get close. Um, so you do it. 
Caitlin likes country music, Lou said. Does that touch her? Lou? Oh my Lou. gosh. <laughs> Asian and Lou. <laughs> no, guys. Don't hate me. I don't like country. Unless I love it's country. Old. Hang on. Unless it's like old country, like old country. They want to know if you are interested in drifting. Yes, I drift. Well. <laughs> she doesn't drift please. cars. She drifts. Drifts. Huh? You drift around. <laughs> do, you all, do you all drag well, race or just up. Hannah? Do you all oh, drag race or no, just Hannah? What happens if they if Joseph beats Sammy in arm wrestling? Is that Joseph Lima? Yes, Joseph Lima. Oh, I have a video if anybody wants to see it. I have a video of Joseph arm wrestling my dad. If you want to see it, it's pretty pathetic. <laughs> okay, well let's uh let's actually right. talk about some of the history of the shop too and how like it, you know how you got started in the let's shop. Let's go back to the arm wrestling. Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> that's well, how I started the shop. That's true. Street racing, arm wrestling, and bare knuckle fighting. But I arm wrestled all over the United States. Arm wrestled one of the world champions, a guy by the name of Dennis Jules. I beat him four times in a row, and then I wound up with all this equipment. But that was one way I made a lot of money is arm wrestling. You know, they call it the game of arms. They call it pulling John, whatever they want to call it. But we had a good time doing it. I did it my whole life, and I, I enjoyed doing it. But um, I don't know who this Joseph kid is. <laughs> Your customer. Oh, yeah, Joseph. Yeah, yeah Joseph. <laughs> That was a good, that was that was horrifying what happened to him. But Joseph's a good kid. Why don't you go ahead and one? Yeah, my shop. So my shop has been here for thirty some years, and I can tell you this right now: if it wasn't for my father and mother, I promise I would not have what I have today. So sometimes you know we, sometimes you know we want to see the worst in everything. But I'm gonna tell you something: you, you can have a thousand friends and a thousand buddies and girlfriends and you only have one mom and one dad and I'm gonna tell you something the harder the, the ones that are the hardest on you is the ones you better stick by their side because they're the ones that love you the most my father and mother were the greatest parents that walked this earth as far as I'm concerned they taught us how to respect and honor people respect and honor and value your possessions you know don't trivialize the gifts that are in front of you always respect uh, the, the skill set you have Never, never walk around with too much pride like you're the only one that can get it done. And never, ever, ever think that you can do it by yourself. Because you can't. You have multiple people. I have multiple people in my life that help us get our stuff done. And I'll never discount them. Anybody that says they can do it by themselves, I'd stay away from them. So, but I did. I started out, my mom, my mom and dad said, look, we're going to give you six months in this building free rent. So... We got, I got six months in it, and I busted numbers night and day, building engines at nighttime, uh, building, my, building my engine room at nighttime, working on cars during the day, because I always believed that you can't build engines in the open atmosphere. There's too much dust particles and too much dirt. And building these engines, especially the racing engines, they've got to be in an impecca in, impeccable environment. So I have a clean room in there, and that's why we have a clean room, and we always assemble the engines at a certain temperature, so I've, I started out 30 some years ago and I'm pretty fortunate. My brother and sister started next door in their business. They have a tile business. My sister has an interior design business. So it's been a, almost a family block. And being, being a Maloof, I really, I don't think we could have grew up, grown up in a better family environment or a better family or have better parents. You know, I, I celebrate them. And that's where I am today with this. 30 some years later, you know, I believe that you give something to somebody that they can't get anywhere else and they're definitely going to call you. And I just love what I do to the point where I want to pass it down to my children. They love it. They, they, they are excellent mechanical stuff. Every single one of my daughters, you give them something, they'll look at it and they'll re-engineer it better. That's, that's the way they are. And I believe that's pretty much passed down to the blood. You want to show them the... 
Race car. Yeah, let's uh. Well, with this engine that we're gonna start at the end here. Um, we, we explained the engine Are you in, in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We walked in. Um, we're just waiting for some gas to come in, right? Is the, yeah, the, the fuel that we have is all racing fuel, and that one there is 900 some horsepower on. So we'll be starting at 100, 100 octane. So they went to get it. We're starting as soon. So stay tuned. from Ecuador. Hello! Hi from Ecuador. Hi from California, United States. Okay, so here's actually my dad's race car. It's a 67 Camaro, and we've got a brand new custom hood that we just got put on it. Oh, shout, he out just, to Frank. shout out to Frank, he our did, painter, he and our body this guy. Hood. He made the hood work right here. He made mesh, like aluminum, and had the whole thing molded. And yeah, we had this whole part this whole piece up here and this also extended. The color match everything, it looks awesome. Yep, awesome, awesome. Yes, sir. Okay, it's on. Yeah, this is a beautiful car. We just got done, he just got done racing it at Irwindale. Wanna tell him about your car, Dad? We showed him your, your first race car. Yeah, it don't matter what I say, it's gonna be theirs anyway. <laughs> Cool. I got a 1971 Nova. Oh, garbage. Been running around <laughs> since uh, 2004. Seen some changes over the years from uh, different nitrous combinations, which is now going to change over to uh, a Pro Charge uh, F3. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Gained about a, about 1,000 to 1,200 horsepower from what I've had. Car's been 440, so if I can get down to four O's or three nitrous or something like that, I'll be super happy. So we'll see how it goes. And my natural, my normally aspirated. Can't do nothing with it. Big block. Can't do nothing with it. It's right at the 490. 490 mark. I don't, for 490, that's not fast enough. You're all second behind. Watch. He he has nitrous. What do you say? Bottles are for what? Bottles are for babies. There it is. See? I don't don't mind being a baby as long as I go fast. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) See, when they can't build real horsepower, then they got to go put what? I mean, my motor, your motor, you can take them off, you know what I'm saying, pound for pound. Oh, see, see no, do. don't ever say I'm you're going to take I'm all just, that I'm stuff up and race Maloof I'm engine. I'm just telling you. Man. And mine's a small engine. Mine's only a 283 cubic inch engine. See? And this guy believes in God. He's got <laughs> <still> <laughs> lies. In one cylinder. So <laughs> it's still under 600 inches. It's 582 inches. Same. Likewise. Mine's that small, too. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, NA all day. Actually, <laughs> I like to take the crank shaft out of it, but, you know, I'm kind of... It's just a short deck. Oh, oh, it's, tall, it's a tall deck, but it got a, it got a yeah. four and a three inch crank, crank in it because crank it's a five eighty two. But um, actually, the crank is not really the issue. It's the cylinder. Because yeah, I would like I, I like to run a five eighty two with a short deck. It's a whole lot more piston speed. But you guys like to do what you want. That's some nitro stuff. It's a little bit different. Oh, it's you, know, you, need, you need an extra room for that the piston and valve not to slap each other. The piston and valve ain't gonna slap each other. Whether it's on a low deck or a tall deck, who are you talking to? What right. <laughs> you better make sure you have enough valve piston clearance. We'll see. Time All right, let's go back in. All right, I think we're ready to start this engine real quick. We got some gas. So, where's my cameraman? Where's mom? Hey, mom. We got Maloof Racing's watching the uh, the live video. Okay, we need the fuel box. We need the fuel. Come on.
Auto the gas. Yeah. This is uh, Get Them Carburetors. We've been using them re more recently now. Um, they're a really great carburetor. Uh, Trevor is the owner, and um, he, ma he built some really yeah. great carburetors. Good times. Yeah. Can't wait to get back out there. So I guess we'll end, start ending this with, um, if you guys have any questions, so any, you know, questions you have about the shop, questions about the show, questions about, um, Hannah, Caitlin, Megan, engine building, <laughs> engine building um, singing, car, singing, tools. <laughs> um, I guess while you guys while we wait for some questions to come in, uh, we do have uh, a big event coming up uh, September 11th. This September 11th, it's called Stunts and Fun. Uh, it's gonna be a really awesome event. We're gonna do it right out here in front of the shop. It's gonna take the whole uh, street up and yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna lock, block the whole street off. The city of San Gabriel is behind us, so we're trying to generate enough funds now. Maloof Racing, winning at the Race of Life, or Sammy Maloof, or none of the Maloofs get any of the proceeds. What these proceeds are going for is our San Gabriel Police Department, our Humane Society, the K-9, the Fire Department, and there's a school called La Casa for Children. So if you all feel led to help out and and help us help us do this fundraiser and donate, we would so appreciate it. Just go to stuntsandfun.com, look it up, and, and make sure you leave your name when you donate so that we know exactly who you are. And that would be so appreciated. And yeah. also, also, Engine Builder Magazine, thank you again for the platform that you've given us. And if there's anything at all we can ever do for you, your organization, your corporations, or anything else in, that you're involved in, please let the Maloofs know. Yeah, a couple questions. Lou, okay. wants, Lou wants to know when you're coming to Oklahoma. <laughs> listen, Lou, now, Lou, you listen here to me. The people you associate with, Asian, now, Farm Truck is great. There's no better. If, you ever, if you've never had a chance to meet Farm Truck, 
Y'all need to do that at some point in time in your life. But better yet, be, meet Mrs. Farm, farm Truck. She is absolutely the best of the best. Asian, on the other hand, ah, they don't get no better than him either. He's one of the greatest guys you'll ever meet in your life, you know. When he comes out over here, we gotta hide everything. Because he, you know, he takes pictures, or they put farm truck stickers everywhere in your shop. How does it should be a little bit different. Everywhere you how go, everywhere I look, I see a farm truck sticker. Dad, how do you balance it all? A successful, I know, but on live you can't hear. A successful race shop, three daughters, a wife, and a career as colorful as yours. It's amazing. Whoever asked that question, if you were standing in front of me, I would hug you a hundred times. And if I wasn't a Christian and I wasn't in the Word of God daily, I promise you, I could not do it. You know, it's, it's something that, that you, whoever asked that question, it's, if you don't have order in your life and you don't have a foundation, you'll never do it. I always go back to the foundation, which is the Word of God to me. And He's the only one that keeps peace that surpasses all understanding. But if you speak the truth and not what you feel or not what you seem that it's, is right, no, God showed me a long time ago, there's a way to a man that seems to be right. That means it's not right. So I do what is right because it's right, and I let the chips fall where they fall. It just so happens I can't do it all alone. I got three beautiful daughters. I've got my bride, Jennifer. I've got Janine, Joshua. Everybody that comes in our life that, that's part of our life, and especially at our outreach, they're a part of keeping everybody at peace because iron sharpens iron. Um, so the next question is uh, the t-shirts. I know somebody, some people were asking about t-shirts. You can order those online. Um, this is an Aloof Racing one. I have a t-shirt on my Supernatural car. And we also have another Maloof Racing t-shirt um, and some other products. You, you can go to Maloof Racing, um, MaloofRacingEngines.com. Sure. Yeah. Okay. You can go to uh, com or you can go to hannahmaloof.com and you can get the t-shirts there. Uh, what other questions do we have? Everybody ask questions now. If you have any questions, I'm reading them. <laughs> Let's see. I know there's like a few that we skipped. Let me scroll down. Scroll down. I'm not going to stop. If not, then you guys can always comment them below when we post the video when uh, Greg posts the video. Oh, yeah, don't forget to watch tomorrow. Yeah, don't forget to watch tomorrow. August 25th. How many? That's the next day. Somebody asked, how many cars have we made? How many cars have we built? <laughs> how many engines have we built? Yeah. Was it cars or engines? Okay, another person said, what advice can you give me on a F30? And maybe meant F Joseph. He said F thirty. Did he mean F three fifty? Maybe it's JDM. Did he mean F three fifty like a truck? An F three fifty truck. Um. Who asked the question with the F thirty? Oh, he's. This guy said he wants to build a three twenty. Or is F30? I'm, I don't know what that. Little Can't displacement. <laughs> okay, what do you think of new muscle compared to old muscle? Hey, you're talking to old muscle. We'll oh, take, a BMW. We'll Never. take old muscle. Any day. <laughs> we'll take muscle. We'll take old muscle any days. Detroit Iron any day. And I'm not discounting the new stuff. The, the new stuff has got so much technology in it and so and and. Trust me, there's a lot of research, a lot of development, and a lot of re, um, a lot of talent in every single car that's built nowadays. But I'm a Detroit Iron guy. I don't I don't mess with imports. I stick to what I know, and that's uh, Chevy, Ford, Chrysler, Pontiac, Buick, and Oldsmobile, old school stuff. And that's what I still build: is racing stuff that's old school, and and stick with it. Questions? Um, for the new people who joined, we're taking questions right now. If anybody has any questions at all. Um, Miss Camaro Brittany wants you to start Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> Supernatural. Uh, I'd love gas. to. I don't have gas for it right now. Sorry. 
Um, it's just a lot of people joining. I'm not seeing any more questions right now. What's the other question? I wish I could pin the little thingy. And there's no more questions right now, just people joining. Okay, well, I mean, then I guess. You got Sammy Maloof all to yourself right now for questions. Huh? Engine building questions. Um, thank you, Sammy, Jennifer, and Hannah Bank, and Engine Building. Okay. All right, well, uh, I guess if there's no other thank questions, we're going to end the video. Thank you guys so much for joining and watching. And, um, you know, you guys got a little insider of Maloof Racing. And don't forget to watch the show tomorrow. Drive part of the Maloof Way on Netflix. Help support our stunts and funny event if you, if you feel led. That would be so beautiful. And also, you can always look us up and get a hold of us at at Maloof Racing at msn.com or just look up Maloof Racing and call us on our, our phone. Or, yeah, or just, uh, you know, you can go to any of our social medias um, or the websites. And yeah, I'm not into that. They are. Yeah, but that's how you get a hold of us if you have, uh, if you need an engine builder or anything. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much. Thank you, Engine Builder. Thank Greg, you, everybody. thank you so much. There's a couple more questions. Are you done? Yeah, go ahead. Let's hear it. <laughs> Sorry, there's one guy says, would you ever race an import? Race against an import or drive one? Would you ever race, I guess, answer for both? Because well, it says... In stunts, I drive imports all the time. You know, we crash them and we wreck them and we skate them and we ski them and do all that stuff. But would I race, would I race one? I'd race an import if somebody wants me to drive it. Or would I race against one? Of course I'd race against one. Okay, another, the guy with the F30, he says that he's from South Africa, so he doesn't have a lot of muscle cars out there, and he bought a BMW F30, he wants to know what to do, I guess, to like go crank up his engine. Okay, if it was my F30, and this is not against anybody, if that car was brought to me, I would take that drivetrain out and I would build a super nice Chevrolet drivetrain for it, a small block Chevrolet, and put a, put a either a stick shift or an automatic in it, whatever he would prefer. And if he wanted air conditioning on it to drive it around, that's fine. But I would build a big small block for it, and and run a complete Detroit Iron Drive drivetrain in, and not not mess with the BMW drivetrain. That's not my expertise. Um, another person asked, what kind of engines do we build? Detroit <laughs> Iron, Chevy, Ford, Chrysler, Pontiac, Buick, Oldsmobile. And for, you know, street ship cars, for drag cars, boats, boats road racing, road race, cup, Winston race. Cup, anything to do with racing, Both offshore cars. boats. Another person asks, how do you feel about the government trying to shut down combustion engines in the future? Let me tell you something right now. That's a great question. They're crazy to try to do that to us. That's our livelihood. That's what we have fun. If they really care about us than to be concerned about what we love to do and protect it, not destroy it. Um, I think, I think is that good? Keep coming in. Okay. Yeah. I, I, we've already got over our time, I think, but uh, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, there's another question I want to try to answer. Um, the car behind us is the stunt car. Uh, that one's been repainted a couple different times, but that I'm sure it's going to be featured in the show. We yeah. We over that at the beginning of the video. That one, a girl named Sonia is driving that one. And it's just been a stunt car from day one. Yeah. So if you want any see. anything regarding builds and stuff, you can direct message Maloof Racing for all these questions. Yeah, for any other uh, more questions, you guys can uh, message us on Instagram, um, Maloof Racing or uh, Hot Run Hannah 777, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible with those questions. So, all right. All right, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you all. That's a metal guy. Tell him to come over and get a lot of How do I end this? Yeah, it's another one. I'm going to put that all scrap. Yeah, just close okay. X. Okay. Are you sure you want to end? And now?